a world apart, it's a world of art But where do I start? Where paintings make us think and music can make us cry And aviation allowed mankind to fly And writing poems let us express In other words, get emotions off our chest Or skydive just for a high But that's just one side The other side is humanity and insanity The have and have nots World hunger and warmongers Homelessness and poverty Cause we live in sovereignty Where bullies look for meek souls to take And suicide happens at an alarming rate Where livelihood costs more than you make where depression, viruses, and STDs got you sick by the world's ills And for the rest of your life you taking pills Hoping to ease the pain Living a bad dream even with a shake you can't awake And you don't have to be sleep to be at awake Cause violence is tainting Where guns get drawn, bad morals become murals Now picture that, your loved one is a painting A world apart is a world of art Today's guest we have Leon Ford and his parents. But before we get into the interview, let's take a look at an incident that would change his life forever, but not change his mind or heart. Especially when you hear uh, the cop on the tape uh, saying I look like this dude a month for because I got on the white, same white t-shirt. So that's all they have, just a right. white t-shirt. Same so, white t-shirt. Same, well, different, they got different birthdays and... They're looking at my license, you can hear him talking. Like, oh, he got a diff this is a different birthday. This is, do you have any brothers? Like, they, never, they never called this play then. That would have just canned everything. They never ran his name. They ran L Ford. feel like you know self-education is important as far as like you know making you know paying attention to like how history like how we were treated oh, and definitely, everything definitely definitely because me actually 
me, when I start reading about history and really get getting to know who I was, that's when I really felt like I, I had to step up and take a take a stand against the system. Because you got you have to learn the history of some things of, 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 of how we are treated and how the system has constantly failed us over and over and over again. And until somebody really understands that, you can't really take a real stand because you don't really know the who who the enemy is and what you're actually fighting for and against. That's true. I know I read like you know all the things going on in Florida, like how they lowered the test scores for you know African Americans and Hispanics, yeah. and it's just like why do they keep you know considered felons like you just said, and it's like if they don't think of us as equals, which they never will until, mm -hmm. you know, but it's just, I don't know. You got them against us and we're a worse enemy. <laughs> so it's like, how could you win? You know, <laughs> but it starts in our own community. It has to. I mean, Pittsburgh is not flooded by a, different, a lot of different nationalities. Like, you know, Jersey, you got a lot of Puerto Ricans and stuff like that. This is a black and white city, you know, the, People be tripping on it. They, I, they like they ask me like, "There's a lot of uh, Spanish and uh, Mexicans." And I be like, "No, nah, they starting to come now, but they getting profiled. You know, as soon as, soon as they driving around in the hood, a Mexican the police is pulling them over because they got a bad rep for drugs. So this is just a, this is a black and white city, more white. Like every city has its own problem, but you just think like." This is, this is the new South, it looks like. Yeah, it is, man, it's real here. And you gotta, even when you think about like edu the education system and how many s schools they closed down in our neighborhoods, it's like, you get, you had uh, Peabody, uh, Westinghouse, Shenley, um, like a Westing, Westinghouse is in Homewood, that's like a uh, black neighborhood. Um, you got Shinley, they, they closed Shinley, they closed Peabody, and they're putting kids from all these different neighborhoods that be beefing. That's another good point I was about to bring up. Like, you know, they always talk about inner city violence, but when you, you close these schools and you gotta go, you know, maybe cross town or different blocks, and it's yeah. like a melting you know pot of doing? everybody, what do you expect? When I was growing up in high school, all the schools he just named, them was all the schools that we used to play football against. We used to love, I mean, playing football, I mean, big games. Now they just put them all together, you know? And then when you think about how these neighborhoods be beef, beefing, it's crazy. That's like um, over there at Perry, they close, they close uh, Oliver, so all the Oliver students go to Perry now. And uh, this guy I talked to, he works in the schools. He said, if like you really got to be on point in that school, he said, like, you, you could just Feel the vibe that some could jump off at any moment in that school. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. At any moment, he said it feels like you're in a juvenile detention center. It's wild down here. That's why I said to see our own kind like divided again amongst one another because we already have it bad, you know. So. And I think that's just like the mentality because it's like you know, people say it's already bad, so if they see somebody doing good, they're like, well, I don't want to support or you know. Praise him because I'm not. My situation is not so. It's like we have to just each one teach. Start one. somewhere. There was this one time in the summer. I got an old school, and I was driving. I got my sounds up, and uh, this cop pulled up on the side of me. He's like, "Turn your fucking music down." And I'm like, "What? This is after I got shot." I'm like, "What?" I'm like, "I'm like, no, nah, you can't." I said, you can't even give me a citation or anything because you can't hear my music from uh, 40 feet away. And that, that, that's the law ordinance. Like, if they can hear from 40 feet away, then they can write you a citation. So I told him, like, yo, I know for a fact you can't hear my music from 40 feet away, so I'm not turning it down. So he was pissed when I said that. So I'm, I, I start, I'm, st I'm sitting there, he's on the side of me, so I'm like, yo, so what you gonna do is you gonna pull me over or what? He ain't say nothing, so I pulled off. So I'm driving, he gets behind me. So I'm like, all right, turn the corner, he's following me. So I'm like, I got shot, just, I just got shot. So I'm like, 
I'm not leaving this block because you got all the barber shops on this street, and like it's like a whole block where all these people are outside. So I'm just I just keep circling the block. Now people's coming outside and I'm recording it because they know I just got shot by the police. You know what I mean? And I'm driving, and eventually I get pulled over. So I pulled over in front of the uh, Domino's, and everybody's recording it and things like that. And dude comes up to my window. He's like, uh, you know why I'm pulling you over? I'm like, no, nah, why? He's like, cuz I can hear your music from 40 feet away. So I'm like, all right, whatever. Like, just give me the citation. So uh, he ended up writing me a citation. But then, like, 10 other police cars came. So now they're hopping out. They got big machine guns and everything. Like, now at this point, I just got shot. I'm like, shook. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, this is crazy, but everybody's recording and everything. And uh, they're telling everybody to back up, back up. And this one cop, he's like, yo, he, he's like, I wish one of these motherfuckers would come over here. Like, I've been waiting to blow somebody's head off. And I heard him say this, like, that's wrong. You know what I mean? And, like, dude's like, on, like, he's looking like, you know what I'm saying? Like, he, like, he was serious. Like, he was serious. It's like, right? so he passed the point to Karen. It's like, right. It's getting to a point here, like, if they don't do something, man, it's going to be a war here. Yeah. It's going to be, I mean, because our backs are already against the wall. The sad thing is, it's everywhere now. That's all you see. I remember when I was in the hospital, and uh, y'all y'all went to court like four times to get the uh, tape. They kept postponing and stuff. They twice, twice. 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 They didn't want to give up the tape. And normally, like, if something happens here with the cops and they're in the right they should immediately yeah. on the news man they blasted they blasted <laughs> if my son would have shot the cop they would have talked about my grandfather me my father my grandfather well he's a he, he his, his background was rotten so he got what you know what i mean so we knew what he was going to be that's another thing i don't feel is right because it's, it's like if someone has a criminal record and the cops could be dead wrong it's like well he has a criminal record Dang. like he don't matter and they just put that as the, you know, right. the topic of it. Basically, that's, so the jury, you know what I mean, once they throw that out there, the jury already got you convicted. That's it. See, his situation was different because right. he ain't got the smudge on his record. So they don't know, you know, how to, and a lot of police officers are pissed off about it too. The, the, the black ones, because I'm telling you, it's a black and white city. We put on there that we, we're, we're asking for a federal, we, we want a federal investigation, man, because okay. that's, that's, the whole thing about basically the rally. We're trying to get the feds to come in and kill all this nonsense because this city right here, we've seen too many people that have slam dunk cases. What I mean by that is cases, there's no way they should have lost that case. You know, and they go in there with these high profile lawyers from Pittsburgh and they come out losing the case and the cops come out smiling. So, we don't trust, we got good attorneys here, but we don't trust the system here, mm -hmm. you know? So that's why we went over and beyond, and we got attorneys coming from here, and we got attorneys coming from L.A. too, you know? So we're going to put them together with the attorneys from L.A. is used to dealing with these type of issues. Yeah. And like I told my attorneys here, I said the only person's hands that I trust my son's life in is my own, and I'm not a lawyer. So therefore, I'm not going to trust his life in y'all's. Look at the track record. You know what I mean? All right, and I started naming different cases, you know? And they lost the case. Everybody just knew they were going to win the case. They go and they lose the case. Some of them was deceased. You know, some of them nuts. You got one dude got pulled over by the cops. The cops shot him in the back of the head. See, they thought he had a gun. He got 10 windows in the back of his car. They killed him. I mean, just simple slam dunk cases. And they... Then we lose them here. So we got different lawyers. So to make a long story short, we want to make sure we put on there that we we, 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 we pleading for a federal investigation. You know, because that'll kill everything. We can't put our trust into the system here. Right. 